Loki is the latest edition of MCU television shows that just concluded yesterday. And before I get into it, this is going to be full of spoilers for Loki Season 1. You have been warned because there is a lot to unpack here. If you've been watching my channel, you know I've enjoyed the MCU television series so far. I liked WandaVision, I liked Falcon Winter Soldier, but I've had a lot of issues with both those shows, but overall, I really enjoyed them. And I was still excited for Loki because from the trailers, it looked really fucking weird, and I was really curious to see what they're going to do with this timeline shit because this takes place technically after Avengers Endgame, but at the same time, it takes place right after the first Avengers, so I was really curious to see what they were going to do with all that. And I can happily say that Loki is by far my favorite MCU series so far. I love this show. It's very fucking weird. It's unique. It's interesting. It's all that. It's not perfect. We'll get into that later. It's definitely not perfect, but it is by far my favorite show that the MCU has made so far. I mean, I was hooked immediately from the pilot episode when Tom Hiddleston and Owen Wilson are talking. Owen Wilson's basically giving him a lecture about why do you do the things that you do even though deep down you're really not that bad of a person. You're not really a villain, but you're trying so hard to be. And I do want to say one of my favorite parts about the show is... Tom Hiddleston and Owen Wilson's connection and their chemistry. They are fantastic together on screen. Tom Hiddleston obviously has embodied the role of Loki. He is fucking great here. There's a lot of great scenes of emotion that he gives. But my favorite part about this series so far and my favorite performance was Owen Wilson. Yes, he's just Owen Wilson in the MCU. But I thought his character was interesting. He's a variant technically. He's working with Loki. He's basically questioning everything he knows. But I always thought when those two were together on screen, any episodes were there on like mysteries and doing all that together was great. And back to that pilot episode, Owen Wilson's basically showing Loki his whole entire life. Loki slips away, comes back, and then he sees his future. Because technically this is after Avengers. He sees he gets killed by Thanos, which could probably change you as a character. But I don't want to get into my issues just yet. But I kind of want to right now because just the flow of me talking in this in this review and everything like that. I get that Loki, you know, just got braided with questions from Owen Wilson about his character, his beliefs, why he does things, all of that. And then he sees his whole life playing in front of him. He gets everything he wants. And then Thanos murders him. So I can see why he would change as a character. But I guess the one thing I found a little bit unbelievable in the show was it seemed like the Loki that we get towards the end of the series, or even throughout the series, seemed like the Loki that we got towards the end of Thor Ragnarok, where he's embraced this role as the anti-hero instead of just the villain. I feel like Loki, straight out of Avengers, the original one, back in 2012, I feel like his transition wouldn't be as fast. I get he saw his whole life play in front of him. I get that. I really do. And you see everything happen to you. You see how you get killed. That can change you. And with Owen Wilson, ask him all these questions that would question his reality and his purpose and all that. But I got to say, there are parts of the series where I'm like, this doesn't feel like Loki from Avengers. This feels like Loki at the end of Thor Ragnarok. And I wish that was developed a little bit better. I guess we can talk about my other issue with the show right now because it does take place in the pilot. I... Didn't really like that they said that the Infinity Stones were like paperweights. They're basically useless. I know we're not getting the full picture of everything yet. There's definitely a plan that Kevin Feige has. But I don't know. I just never appreciate it when you are so attached to something for 10 years. Told how powerful and all whatever it is. And then we just get a scene where it's not even played as a joke. It's supposed to play like the MCU is way bigger than you think. And I'm excited to see that. But I feel like putting the Infinity Stones, saying that they're useless, just is kind of a slap in the face for the last 10 years leading up to Infinity War and Endgame. I didn't really like that. I thought maybe we'd learn a little bit more, and we kind of do. But I don't know. It's just a gripe I have. You watch my videos for my opinion. I personally just didn't like that choice. I get we're trying to set up how much bigger things are about to be in the MCU. I just personally didn't really like that that much. It's weird to talk about my issues first because now I can just talk about everything I love about the show because there is a lot of things I love about the show. I think it looks great. The directing, the artwork, all that, it's colorful. And like I said before, it's really fucking weird. I love that we're going into this weird direction in MCU. I'm glad we're not just being like, oh, we got to set up another Thanos or we got to do another Infinity War or anything like that. They did that. 
They ended it perfectly with Endgame. And now they're like, let's experiment. Let's be fucking weird. Let's make Loki an alligator. And I think it's great. It's just so entertaining to watch. Really what's so great about this show, on top of everything I just said, is how engaging it is. There is so much mystery and so many questions that I had throughout the show that just kept giving me more and more answers, but not all the answers. I feel like WandaVision was doing that at first, and then it kind of got lost. You got a lot of the answers that you needed, and then afterwards, it's kind of like, whatever. Here in Loki, I was always engaged. It seemed like every single episode, there were just more and more questions, and it was building to something big, and we'll get into that a little bit, and eventually does. And I'm just glad that they pulled that off. I also thought Sophie DiMartino as Lady Loki was a lot of fun to watch. I love all these different versions of Loki, like all these different variants, and it sets up the multiverse, which we'll get in a little bit, but I thought her performance was good. I just liked their chemistry together. Granted, I guess this is an issue I have that I didn't talk about before, but I guess I found their romance a little bit unbelievable. Like, it wasn't totally unbelievable, but I will say when they kiss at the end, it felt a little awkward. But I think the whole thing with them together, their chemistry, them working together, it worked out fine. I just don't know if I completely bought it as a romance. But I really just love the chaos and absurdity and the weirdness of the show. And that really fits well with Loki's character. And I know I said before, it seemed like Loki's character was developed too quickly, comparing it to him at the end of Avengers and then him at the end of Thor Ragnarok and here. But there were moments of the show that I really did enjoy the choices they did make with developing Loki's character. I thought that all worked even though sometimes a little bit too quick. And now let's talk about the finale because this is the first MCU show that stuck the finale. I mean, this finale was great. I feel like in WandaVision and Falcon Winter Soldier, it was a big fight and then nothing really paid off. Here, there's a little bit of a fight, but most of this finale is really just Loki, Sylvie, talking to Kang the Conqueror, which was a great reveal, even though everyone on Twitter saw that coming, but that was a great reveal. Obviously, he's going to be the villain moving forward. But their conversation was just fascinating. We learned more about the multiverse, their purpose, what they're supposed to do, the timeline, what's going to happen if he's killed or he just goes away. And it does put in perspective of how big this universe actually is and what's to come next. Because Sylvie ends up killing Kang the Conqueror and then Loki goes back to the TVA. Owen Wilson doesn't know who he is, and we see a big statue of King the Conqueror, which I have a lot of questions. I'm not going to get into my questions because they'll probably get answered eventually, but it just seemed like this series is going to open up so many possibilities with the MCU. Not just saying for like fan service because it sounds like now we're probably going to get Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield and Spider-Man, which I'm very excited about. I think that's going to happen, right? Because I've always thought the MCU is just so big during Endgame and all that big universe with endless possibilities i never really fully understood how big the universe actually is and kevin feige and the crew obviously know what they're doing and i think the multiverse is a great idea because it really opens up so many possibilities and also it's gonna mean some weird fucking shit and that's what we want we want to see some new and just strange shit moving forward with the mcu let's get experimental and it sounds like they're doing that this show really is one of the most important properties the MCU has made. You would think that in a series, when you make all these movies, like you have the TV series and you have all the movies made, you could possibly skip this TV series. Like I never watched the Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. show that came out. But you'd think with these TV series you could skip and then just pay attention to the movies. Not anymore. Loki is one of the most important properties that you have to watch now to know what's going on with the mcu and that's another reason why i love this show it feels like this really has full repercussions moving forward wandavision and falcon Winter soldier has some repercussions moving forward the mcu but here it feels huge like everything has changed and i cannot wait to see what kevin feige and the crew have coming next loki is by far my favorite mcu series to date it's colorful unique fucking weird as shit all over the place but in a good way i love that the mcu is experimenting trying really new and different and weird shit tom hillson was great owen wilson was my favorite part about the series probably and yes i had some issues with the series it's not perfect i think they developed loki's character a little bit too quickly compared to where he was at the end of avengers and at the end of thor ragnarok and then where he is now and there are some things they did with the MCU that I didn't really like, specifically with Infinity Stones. 
But I will say it seems like they know what they're doing. They haven't really missed yet. Kate Heron did a great job of the series, and I'm so excited to see what Kevin Feige and the crew have for us next. I'll give Loki nine Davy Daves. I am really looking forward to all these MCU movies coming out now. I cannot wait for that Spider-Man trailer. I mean, people are probably going to be waiting to see what the fuck's going to happen in that movie. And then Doctor Strange is literally called Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, so that all makes sense now. Like I said, they clearly have a plan of chaos and weird shit, and I am so excited to see what they're going to do next. So, season one of Loki has ended yesterday. Let me know what you guys thought if you've seen it. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching. Click here to see more of Dave Dave's Takes.